Todd Coley here with the Texan News Service with strength and conditioning coach Rod Cole. Rod, thank you so much for joining us. 30 years in the coaching world, worked in the Big 12, plenty of accolades towards you. Elaborate on your time here in Stephenville and what you like so much about working with the Tarleton Athletic Department. Well, this is my 31st year of coaching, sixth year here at Tarleton State. And uh, when I left Texas A&M and came to Tarleton, I asked a lot of people uh, their opinions of Tarleton State University and of Stephenville. And I got the great uh, an answer that you're going to love Stephenville, Texas, and you're going to love Tarleton State. And when I came here, uh, Coach Reisman, our athletic director, and I basically had one conversation about having the best strength and conditioning program in Division II. And that's uh, what we've worked toward. And I, I feel like I do exactly what I did at, at Kansas State and at Texas A&M uh, in the past, working with athletes, doing what I love to do, and it's been a great experience. Okay, now in 1998, you won Strength Coach of the Year by Pro Football Coaches. How did that milestone stack up towards other achievements in your career, and what is it that you think sets you apart to get that achievement? Well, every year I have goals that I set down. And my, no, my goal every year is for every team that we have to make the postseason, make postseason play. And uh, in 1998, I was part of a team that uh, – was ranked number one in NCAA for a great part of the season. And then we lost in the Big 12 championship game but, uh, and lost our opportunity to go to the, the national championship game. But uh, as a strength and conditioning coach, it's all about what the, what the student athlete's going to achieve, about the, the young people that we're working with. And when they do great things, coaches get awards. So uh, my goal is for them to do great things. Now. You know, what do you think you do differently than most strength and conditioning coaches that gets you those accolades? Well, I think every strength and conditioning coach operates a little differently. Um, my pat answer to people when they ask me what a strength and conditioning coach does is I get up very early in the morning to open the weight room for athletes that don't want to be there to make them do things they don't want to do so that in the long run they can achieve and accomplish the things they want to. And uh, it's consistency every day show up uh, and we have a standard and it's my job to enforce the standard every day and if we reach that standard every day in our workouts then we have a chance to reach those standards in our competition now you mentioned kansas state and texas a m both very large schools how has the transition to being at a smaller school like tarleton been on you um, i have a mindset uh, a guy named frosty uh, westering was a head coach at Pacific Lutheran for years. Wrote a job, uh, wrote a book one time about make the big time where you are. And it doesn't matter whether you're at Division Two, II, Division One. Uh, you go to work the same every day, and give your best effort and expect the best effort from your athletes. Um, I don't think of it as being any different. I do what I love to do. I push athletes to their best, and we've got some Division Two athletes here at Tarleton State. They're doing great things, and it, it's a pleasure to work with them. Okay, now you mentioned how much you love it, 31st year in the business, I'm assuming you really enjoy it. What is it that you enjoy most about being a strength and conditioning coach? I guess I'm a creature of habit. I love, I love the grind of every day. Uh, this morning, we had football practice at 5.45. The whistle blew, I was at football practice. As soon as football practice was over, I was inside. We'd already had baseball and cheerleading and softball going through and workouts. And then at eight o'clock, we started a football group, a couple of men's basketball guys on special arrangements, and some volleyball players all at the same time. I just love organizing all the different sports, working with all the different athletes. And when people think of me as the strength and conditioning coach at Tarleton State, that's kind of a misnomer because I have right now 22 people working with me. I have a full-time assistant, Adam Beal, a graduate assistant, Cole Martin, uh, a professional intern, Leanne Rogers, and then another 18, 19 people uh, that are graduate students and undergraduate students that work with me as well. I couldn't handle the 370 athletes we have by myself. Uh, I, I uh, really enjoy here the opportunity to work with great young people who are becoming great strength coaches. Leanne Rogers just earned her uh, strength and conditioning coach certified status last spring. Tanner Marr uh, was a graduate assistant for me, just got a job at New Mexico State this summer. Uh, it's, it's fun to work with these up and coming young strength coaches that I have in our program. Now, can you briefly go through 
what an athlete's looking at when he comes in at 5.45 in the morning to work out with you? What's, what's that person going to have to go through that morning? Well, they come in, they get their card, and they want to get there a little bit early. They're going to do some foam rolling, some stretching, get something done to prepare themselves to work out. Uh, when we work out Friday morning, we'll have the football, uh, the freshmen working out at 6 o'clock. At 6 o'clock, the whistle blows. And the word is at 6 o'clock when a whistle blows, one voice. And that's mine. And they're listening to me, and we give them instructions, and we lay it out for them. And they're looking at about 45 minutes of go time. Uh, we don't have a lot of break in between. We run a no-huddle offense. A lot of the schools in this conference run a no-huddle no offense, so our defense is always on the move. So we push it, and we're training in the weight room to prepare us to play on the field. And, um, you know, we got the music blaring, but it's not time to sing along and dance to the music. We're getting after it and working and, and pushing weights and doing a variety of different things, uh, not just lifting heavy weight, but doing athletic movements uh, to prepare us to, to be better athletes on the field. Now, you mentioned earlier that, you know, a lot of these guys at 545 in the morning aren't super excited about working out. So what is it that you find is key in keeping these young athletes motivated to come in and work out with you? Well, one of my things is it doesn't matter what time it is. If you're in the weight room, if you're on the practice field, it's time to go. Uh, and, you know, our guys have gotten used to that. Our football team really practices better at 6 a.m., I think, than they do later in the day. They have gotten into routine where they get up and they're ready to work. And I think that pays a dividend for us in toughness. You know, later on, the things they've been through, we work out at 6 a.m. in the wintertime. You know, we've been on the field when the uh, water in the pumpers freezes. You can't get a drink because it's all frozen. And uh, I think there's a toughness that comes with that and a mental mindset of no matter what it takes, we're going to get it done. Okay, now is there anyone on the team here, or any team for that matter, that you just see as an athletic freak that when they get in the gym, you, they just blow you away with what they're able to do in there? Well, I, I've coached over 100 guys that have played in the NFL. And I look back, uh, Darren Sproles, uh, now just went to the Philadelphia Eagles from the New Orleans Saints. He was very special. He rarely said a word. He came to the weight room and just got after it. Quick, explosive, powerful, all the attributes. You know, he, he wasn't... Uh, uh, he wasn't little, he was just short at five, five and a half, about 185 pounds and solid muscle. Uh, Jordy Nelson that plays receiver for the Green Bay Packers uh, is a guy that was, was a special one. I coached him for four years at Kansas State. Uh, here on this team, we have you know, guys at a, at a little different level that are just as special. Nick Perez, every day the effort he brings into the, into the weight room, onto the field is in, incredible. You know, offensive lineman from right here in Stephenville, uh, just a tremendous individual. Jabari Anderson is a redshirt freshman running back. Uh, the things he does in the weight room is, are phenomenal. Chris Brown just got here, a transfer defensive tackle from Kansas State. Big 325-pound man that can move and run. Uh, Anthony Gonzalez, a defensive end for us. Originally out of junior college, he signed with Baylor and then ended up coming here. Uh, tremendous athlete. But there's 100 other guys that all have special attributes as well. Uh, and that's the thing with my staff, we try to, to coach every guy and make every guy think of themselves as special and do special things. Well, Coach, thank you so much for a little bit of insight into what it takes to get these collegiate athletes trained and ready to play whatever sport they're in, and I appreciate your time. Thank you.